Um, I don't know why the plants in the background keep doing a jig. For some reason, I try to set them and they'll just keep spinning over and over and over again. So I'm just gonna let them do their thing and hopefully they'll stop. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you guys are all doing really well. For today's video, it's actually gonna be a bit of a sad one because I think it's about time that we accept that quality reality television is very much dead. I've just been thinking recently about how good reality TV used to be. And when I tried to compare it to the stuff that we're watching right now, I couldn't believe how unfair it was to the new stuff, which I think is weird because I don't know about you guys, but if you had told me 10 years ago that reality TV would have bigger budgets, more unique show concepts, and that the internet would be showing us that there's more than enough entertaining and exciting people to put on a cast, I would have assumed that reality TV would only be getting better but it isn't. If anything, it's almost the opposite. Before we continue on with the video though, I did wanna give a quick shout out to our sponsor, which is Audible. If you haven't heard of them before, Audible is the leading provider of spoken word entertainment and audiobooks. They've got bestsellers, new releases, tons of different genres, and they now also host podcasts. Audible's also recently launched Audible Plus, where with the membership, you can get full access to their Plus catalog, which has thousands of select originals, audiobooks, podcasts, and even ad-free versions of popular shows and exclusive series. They even have guided meditations, and what's also nice is that you can download or stream without any limit because you can listen to them offline too. I actually got into audiobooks around the time that quarantine started, and what I like about it so much is that I'm able to read during the times that I wanted to read but previously couldn't because I physically couldn't hold a book. So when I'm cooking or I'm doing laundry, and usually I wouldn't be able to like balance a book while I'm trying to do that, but instead I just pop in my earbuds and I can just listen to it. It's also actually helped my reading pace a ton too. I was comparing on Goodreads last year versus so far this year, and I've already blown past the amount of books that I read all of last year, which I'm not the type of person that like stresses about how much I read, but it is really nice to see that I'm making that much progress with the books that I wanted to read. I actually just finished I'm Thinking of Ending Things, which, oh my God, I have not had a thriller leave me that shell-shocked in years. If you haven't read it yet, please do. Like I could not recommend it enough. The next book that I'm reading is called Like Streams to Ocean by Jedediah Jenkins, which is a collection of essays about like ego, friendship, love, life, that kind of stuff. My brother recommended it, so hopefully it's good. If that isn't your thing though, don't worry. Audible has thousands of different titles to choose from, so you're bound to find something that you wanna check out. So if you wanna give it a try, you can actually visit audible.com slash caseyonzo or text caseyonzo to 500-500 to start your free 30-day trial. That's audible.com slash caseyonzo or text caseyonzo to 500 500 to start your free 30-day trial with audible thanks again to audible for sponsoring if you're interested i would definitely check out the link in the description box but otherwise let's get to the video i have to be honest here though it was actually one show in particular that spurred this whole video topic and it's one that my sister had actually started watching with her friends they had this thing where like over zoom they'd watch different reality shows and there was a bit of a lull where nothing was really airing except for one show called temptation island at that point, I'd never actually heard of the show before, but it did sound at least interesting. It does remind me of a lot of different shows with just the words temptation and island. But according to the show's description, it's a social experiment where four couples at a crossroads in their relationship put their love to the test by giving single life a try. On the Hawaiian island of Maui, they'll take a break from each other while living in separate houses with sexy singles to discover if there's another partner with whom they're more compatible. In the end, will the couples leave together? Will they leave with one of the island's tempters? Or will they break up and go home alone? Whatever the outcome, there will be plenty of drama along the way. Hey babe, do you wanna to go to an island so I can cheat on you as a test for our relationship? Well, this doesn't sound like a bad idea at all. What's shocking to me about this show though isn't that people would sign up for something like this because of course they did. But what really surprised me is that this show sounds like it would be setting up a super toxic environment that would be full of confrontation, drama, and just general chaos at all times. So when I went into it, I was expecting that. And instead it was so boring that it was almost impressive. Ideal date. They give me a spear. We do spear fishing and I grab a lobster. Wait, I've never done that. I'm into it. Like I I, I'm it. I'm so adventurous. Like how is that even possible? You have every element that you would think a reality show would need to be successful, or at the very least entertaining, but it just isn't. And that's what really made me start thinking about reality shows right now and how underwhelming they've been, even though they're technically checking off every box. The theme song for this show too is just so ridiculous. You're not gonna tell me. You're not gonna 
tempt me. If you think about the whole history of reality television, a lot of the shows that made reality TV as successful of a genre as it is today were shows like The Real World, Jersey Shore, The Bachelor, Dance Moms, America's Next Top Model, The Simple Life, The Kardashians, and a bunch of other shows that I'm sure that people are gonna yell at me for not mentioning, but they were the blueprint for a reason. Look at the material. Can I get you anything? A gun. Time to wake up! I almost seen your kooka. Diamond earring came up in the ocean and it's gone. And there's people that are dying. No, I never said yes, that. Yes, you most certainly no, did. No, I didn't, ding that, listen! Somehow even the Duggars have managed to have a stronger entertainment presence than most reality shows airing today, which is kind of surprising when you consider that the whole point of their show was proving that they're the blandest people on planet Earth. I think it's important for our kids to understand that mommy and daddy love each other. And I'm pretty sure that Jim Bob being better at you than anything is a very big downgrade. Maybe even a godly downgrade, if you will. Well, I guess the question I have for this video is, where did it all go wrong? Because there was this massive bull run of shows, like maybe even a few years ago, where it felt like you couldn't even keep up because there were just that many great shows, and now there's just nothing. It just all of a sudden feels like we're watching the same thing over and over again. Like, what happened? Before we start looking into things a little further, I do think that my general opinion is that while reality TV does look a lot better, as in it's more polished and higher quality, I do think that lack of sloppiness has made it less entertaining. Take the cast of a lot of these shows as an example. Reality TV doesn't feel like reality TV anymore. It feels like an audition to become an Instagram influencer. It's getting to the point where FabFitFun might as well be handing out brand deal goodie bags inside the Bachelor Mansion. Nothing can make me feel better in this moment right now. I am so unbelievably upset. Except for, of course, the FabFitFun spring box, which you can, of course, get for $10 off using my promo code, <laughs> StinkyWinky. And of course, people going on future seasons of that show see that and know that if they act a certain way on camera, they can jumpstart an influencer career after leaving. And of course, it's not just FabFitFun, but I do think that their relationship with ex-Bachelor contestants is just the most hilariously obvious example, but it is just common for a lot of contestants to leave a show and be able to become an Instagram influencer by taking on a ton of different brand deals. And I don't really think there's anything wrong with this, but I do think that it affects the show's dynamic because people are acting more curated, which takes away from the whole point of reality TV, which is to be real, or at least real enough that the audience thinks you're being real. Or you're giving us clips like these. I just wanna sing over time. One, two. Three, go. I'm trying to get wet, ain't talking about swimming. But I do really think that social media is the reason that if you watch reality TV from five to 10 years ago versus today, that you can see such a difference in the way that people are acting on camera. But I don't think it just affects the way they act, but also the way that they're chosen and treated. Some of the most boring reality shows I've watched have either depended on having a lot of influencers in the cast, or it's just been completely devoted to that influencer. And I think at this point, we all know why they bring them on. It's built in marketing, they promote the show to their audience, and it's just a natural assumption that someone who's able to build a following on their own would be just as entertaining for the general public. But surprisingly, a lot of the time they aren't. And that's not to say that every influencer who's ever been on a reality show isn't entertaining or interesting. They just aren't entertaining or interesting in the context of a reality show. A lot of people aren't, and that's why it's so hard for shows to get a solid cast. But I do think the level of influencers that are popping up on these shows or having their own shows pop up is just making it very obvious. And that's the other thing. It's not just one or two influencers showing up in a cast of normal people, but now you're having more shows completely focused on influencers popping up. Some pretty recent examples would be Tana Mojo's MTV web series or Snapchat show with Nikita Dragon. And you'd think that considering the amount of controversy and drama associated with both of them, that they'd make for good TV, but they don't. I think it's because a lot of the drama is probably fabricated and it's a lot easier to fake drama through a phone on the internet than it is to do it live in front of a camera crew. But if anything, I think these shows are actually working against the influencers that are starring in them because they're showing parts of their personalities that they purposely don't show in YouTube videos or Instagram stories where they control the narrative. Back when Tana's show was airing, her fans were so shocked at the way that she was treating people on the show that she had to make a response video to blame it on editing. Like I said earlier, one thing that really shocked me about about reality shows is that the more polished these shows get, the worse they become. Some of the best reality shows look like shit if you put them side by side with current shows in terms of production value and video quality. 
But I think that that sloppiness is what made it feel like actual reality TV. And that's not me saying that I think that all old reality shows weren't scripted, but I do think that that kind of sloppiness made it feel like even if there was a scripted moment, it still felt real. Versus now, I feel like everything's so overproduced that everything just feels scripted and I don't even feel like it's worth watching because what's the point of watching reality TV if it doesn't even feel like it's reality TV? Take Temptation Island, for example. Usually with any kind of dating reality show, they'll have some sort of activity or segment that'll create drama, which usually is cheating. But with Temptation Island, they pretty much speed run the typical dating show by cutting out everything that happens up until that moment and then make it all about it by just throwing couples in head first. Technically as the audience, this should be what we want. We want those blowups and the confrontation and all these fights that they always tease in commercials. And Temptation Island is basically taking all those moments and making the show only about them. But for some reason, I don't know if this is just me, but watching the show, it just felt weird and gross and also somehow boring. Like the whole show is just a bunch of people that are either cheating on their partner or they're hoping their partner isn't cheating on them while they're remaining faithful. And then you just watch a highlight reel of what your partner did or didn't do in front of everybody else. I will say though, the host on this show is so nice. Like so much so that I quite literally need to show you this example of how he reacts when a girl finds out her partner's been cheating on her all week. Do you see a recurring theme for all of you? That you're carrying pain from past stuff and you just aren't allowing yourself to let it go. Yeah, it's true. Like this guy is giving sermons, but also what the fuck is this show? Also, is it? Just me or does he kind of look like Ellen? I'm sure you guys can probably tell though that I'm not really the biggest fan of Temptation Island. I don't know what it is really about it because at the end of the day, it does have a lot of similarities between a ton of different shows that I don't find as weird or boring to watch. But I do think that Temptation Island is an extreme example of people trying to regurgitate an already successful show, but make it different enough that it justifies making a new one. Think Love Island, but take away everything except for Casa Amor, and you've got Temptation Island. There are so many versions of the exact same show, and I don't really think it's a new issue. There are repetitive show concepts and spinoffs back then as well, but I also think they were able to rely on their cast more back then to still make it entertaining and fun for viewers. But casts are different now, and I don't think they're able to offset the redundant show concepts like they used to. Like how many times are we gonna put people either on a beach or an island? Put them on a paddle boat, I don't care. At least it would be different. I think this is part of the reason why TLC is still somehow doing well, because even though they come up with the wackiest and I mean the wackiest show concepts known to man, and they give airtime to some of the creepiest people on planet Earth, at least it's something different and it feels authentic to people because it's lower quality and feels more like reality TV. TLC is still finding people that, regardless of social media, are still willing to act crazy on camera, which is a thing a lot of networks haven't been able to do. And by haven't been able to, I mean that TLC already has the reputation of airing interesting characters, so they don't really have anything to lose when it comes to giving ridiculous show concepts a chance. Well, I think that other networks aren't really willing to run that risk and opt instead for safer reality show concepts and casts. One show I can actually think of that's come up with a unique concept that seems to be doing well would be The Circle by Netflix. The show follows contestants who are competing for $100,000 completely online as the players are separated from each other and can only interact with each other through the circle. So the contestants are flirting, before friending or catfishing each other all in an effort to win the prize money. I think the concept is super unique. I tried watching it and personally, I just don't think it's the show for me, but I can definitely appreciate how different of an idea it is. And clearly it has a fan base. And it actually makes me think that the future of reality TV might be focusing on shows that are based on some sort of competition. If you look at a lot of the reality shows that have continued to air for years, they're all competition shows. I think that element of it really helps bring out the sides of people that are entertaining to watch and for the cast, it makes it less about trying to curate yourself for the camera because you're focused on winning. I just think that shows that are centered around following someone or a group of people's lives or even some of the dating shows are starting to fade out because they're too focused on their lives, which they're trying to curate as much as possible, which just doesn't work for reality TV. But obviously, again, that's just my opinion, so I'd love to hear what you guys think. It's also beyond me that some shows are continuing to do such a shit job at having a diverse cast. And it's especially upsetting to watch when you can quite literally see the effects of their shitty casting job 
playing out live on camera for the cast members in the show. Even though I do think the TLC is probably the closest we have right now to old reality TV, I do think it's quite a ways off from what we used to watch. And I don't know if it's just me who has to accept it or maybe you guys as well, but I think it's just time to realize that the golden age of reality TV has come and gone. The shows from back then were just such a product of their time and they were so completely unhinged. Like I think even if you wiped everyone's brain of a certain show that was super popular back then and you aired it today, I just don't think it would be received as well because the environments are completely different. And I just think in general, it's impossible to replicate because you'd have to replicate the audience and that time as well, which we live in a completely different age than five to 10 years ago. And honestly, I think that trying to replicate it would be a worse product than if you just tried to grow from it instead. People are just too aware these days. And I don't really think that's a bad thing because social media right now makes it a hell of a lot harder than it was five to 10 years ago to do something embarrassing on TV and move past it. But it does make for less entertaining TV. So I guess in the meantime, while we're watching the reality TV casket be lowered further and further into the ground, I will go back to the show that has never failed me, The Challenge. Let me know what you guys think about reality TV these days. I don't know if it's just me that feels like it's been getting worse. Maybe you've thought it's always been shit. If you want, I think it would be cute to share like old favorite reality shows. Mine were definitely the real world, The Challenge of Jersey Shore but I'm also not opposed to hearing the current shows you guys really don't like as well. But hopefully you guys did enjoy the video. If you did, feel free to give it a like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out. I stream every week on Twitch, which in my opinion, it's a pretty good time. I'll be pinning the link if you wanna check it out down below in the comment section. And if you wanna follow me outside of YouTube, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter, which are both at Casey Anzo. But yeah, that's about it for me. I really hope you guys enjoyed the video again and I'll see you in the next one. Filling up. Why is it moving like that? Relax! Why are you like this? Just relax. Did it stop moving? It's still going. You don't have to do this. I look like Farquaad.